We will start in one minute. Morning, brother. Brother Joe. Morning, brother Joe. Good evening, brother Joe. Or good morning. Morning over <laughs> there. Ah, good evening, evening over <laughs> in your area, yeah. So yeah, so good evening. In Mexico, what time is it now, Doctor Perez? It's six o'clock. In the evening. No, in the afternoon. And the, oh, okay. <laughs> in the <laughs> afternoon. Okay. Yeah. I told you what's uh, very early for you. No, not really. This is uh, just about yeah. time to, yeah, it's... to work. Yeah, good Good to start the day with, uh, yeah. you know, early. with the sustainability lecture. <laughs> Yes. All right, everyone. So it's already eight uh, in the morning, at least in the Philippines. So uh, good day to everyone. Welcome again to another LaSalle Sustainability Lecture Series. I'm Dr. Ari Sobando. I'm the Assistant Dean for the Research and Advanced Studies of the Gokong Way College of Engineering of the LaSalle University. I will be your host for today. And together with me, uh, as co-host, we have Dr. Ria Sumaga, Assistant Professor at the University of the Philippines, Los Baños, and PhD candidate under the Department of Chemical Engineering at De La Salle University. Along with us, we have Professor Katina Aviso, Dean of the Gokong Way College of Engineering of De La Salle University, organi organizing this La Salle Sustainability Lecture Series. To start the program, we would start with a prayer. Become the hope that I can be. 
Thank you very much, Ria. Our lecture for today is entitled Recycling Strategy for Textile Wastewater in Presence of Additives Treated by Simple Ozonation. And before we start with the sustainability lecture for today, we'll have first an introduction of the LaSalle Sustainability Lectures, which would be delivered by Professor Dr. Raymond Tan, Vice President for Research and Innovation of De La Salle University. Well, ladies and gentlemen, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. It's my pleasure to welcome you to this edition of the 2023 Sustainability Lecture Series. I am Professor Raymond Tan. I'm the Vice President for Research and Innovation of De La Salle University in Manila, Philippines. This lecture series is being held in cooperation with the International Association of La Salle Universities, or IALU. This is a global network of universities with presence in the Americas, in Africa, the Middle East, Europe, and Asia. The lecture series is conducted by the Center for Engineering and Sustainable Development Research at De La Salle University, which is a comprehensive, private, nonprofit Catholic university in the Philippines. As uh, the flagship La Salian institution in this country, we are proud to say that we've grown significantly, not just as an educational institution, but as an institution that drives the creation of new knowledge through research and development. The lecture series is inspired by, firstly, Pope Francis's encyclical Laudato Si on care for our common home. This document enjoined Christians all over the world to reassess their lifestyles and adopt more sustainable practices for the benefit of the human race. Similarly, the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals set forth in 2015, 17 goals that have been adapted by countries all over the world as a roadmap for development within the limits that can be sustained by the planet. Both of these documents provide basis and inspiration for the sustainability initiatives that are undertaken by academics throughout the world, including academics working within the IALU network. The sustainability lecture series was initially conceived in late 2020 by a core group consisting of Dr. Kathleen Aviso, the Dean of the Gokong Wei College of Engineering, Dr. Carmelita Kebenko, Chancellor Emeritus of De La Salle University, and Dr. Alvin Colaba, the Director of the Center for Engineering and Sustainable Development Research, and of course, yours truly. The lecture series deals with diverse topics in sustainable development and are mostly held on the last Wednesday of each month, streamed via Zoom and with recordings made available via YouTube. We have a dedicated YouTube channel with um, all, almost all of the previous lectures made available publicly with a total of about 5,000 plus individual views to date. And we've drawn on resource persons from the global IALU network to share their initiatives on sustainable development. And as the world emerges from the COVID-19 pandemic, we have decided that this lecture series remains a testament to the Lasallian commitment to a greener planet. Thank you and good morning. Thank you very much, Professor Tan. Let me acknowledge first the presence of Brother Joe Scheiter and Chancellor Emeritus Dr. Carmelita Kebenko for today's uh, presence. Okay, to introduce our speaker, we have the Director of the Center for Engineering and Sustainable Development Research of De La Salle University, Professor Dr. Alvin Colaba. Thank you, Dr. Ubando. 
uh, Cancer Emeritus Carmelita Pibenco, our Lasallian brothers, and the entire uh, Lasallian uh, community, not only the Philippines, but the entire world. Of course, uh, Dean uh, Kathleen Aviso, uh, Dr. Bando, um, members of the uh, DLSU community. Good morning. Uh, today, we again uh, are happy to uh, organize one of the important uh, topics uh, as part of our DLSU Sustainability Lecture Series, organized uh, by the DLSU Center for Engineering and Sustainable Development Research, which has been established uh, over 20 years now. And our center has over 2,000 uh, 500 uh, scientific publications in Scopus and other uh, web science uh, journals with an aggregate uh, over 70, uh, you know, uh, each, uh, each index now for our publications. Um, today, uh, we are pleased to have another distinguished lecturer from the School of Chemical Sciences at La Salle University in Mexico City. She holds a doctorate degree in science in chemical engineering from National Polytechnic Institute, also in Mexico City. She focuses her research on two particular areas, the study of water quality wastewater treatment by oxidation advanced process, including the development of new technologies to treat fresh water and polluted water, and also the development of natural products based on ozone to treat tropical conditions such as diabetic food. Our speaker has published well-cited papers, such as the ozonation degree of vegetable oils as a factor of their anti-inflammatory -infl and wound healing effectiveness, and effect of additives on ozone-based decomposition of reactive black five and direct red 28 dyes. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure and honor to introduce and welcome our speaker for this morning, Dr. Arisbeth Amidzin Perez Martinez from the University of La Salle in Mexico City. Her topic is on recycling strategy for textile wastewater in presence of additives treated by simple ozonation. Dr. Martinez. Hi everyone, good morning and good afternoon. Uh, let me uh, share my presentation. Um, yes. Well, um, I'm glad to participate in La Salle University uh, in Mexico City. And I was invited to participate in La Salle Sustainability Lectures and I'm glad to be here. Um, as uh, uh, the the main focus of this uh, this little talk was in, in the recycling st strategy for textile wastewater in process of additive straight by simple solution, and, uh, and why I decided to talk about this uh, specific topic because it's um, it's very important to me uh, to develop and. Um, uh, yes, to develop new technologies or methods to to treat a wastewater to um, in order to give it a second use or use this uh, treat water in the same process is the focus of this uh, this uh, research um, because uh, this this question here is very uh, important and impact and a little bit shocking. Um, because um, 
Um, textile industry typically generated 200 to 3,050 metros cubics of wastewater per ton of finished product. Uh, approximately in the dyeing process, I use 100 to 150 liters of water per kilogram of product. So this question is it's important because for one uh, cotton shirt or uh, the jeans that we wear in every day, uh, we spend 11,000 uh, liters of water that equivalent, uh, it's equivalent uh, to the water that an adult will drink in 11 years. So the, the amount or the quantity that uh, textile uh, industry uh, generates uh, wastewater is, is very shocking and important. And specifically here in Mexico City, uh, well, in Mexico, uh, our regulations or legislation are not very clear about the wastewater. In fact, we have uh, very old legislation, legislations um, the actual uh, normativity or regulations that we have are from 1993. And the last actualization was uh, in 2021 to wastewater. So here in Mexico, it's not clear um, about the new uh, pollutants in water, and specifically the textile water. There is no, there is no uh, regulation specifically. Uh, so it's important to treat this kind of water. According to the uh, to the United Nations, this problem of, of environmental emergency was um, um, was worst uh, because the new phenomenon known as fast fashion. Um, uh, it is estimated that in a year, this uh, new industry or the fast fashion phenomenon, have, uh, there are an average of 50 micro collections of the year per year, and only 60% of the clothes producer are used. The only 40% are disposal. Uh, so one, per one kilogram of, of cotton that uh, that die in, in the process of the textile industry. Um, uh, the quantity of water could be consumed an, by an adult in 10 years. So the um, United Nations consider, consider this problem as an em environmental emergency. So it is very important to, to create or develop or establish new technologies to treat this kind of water because uh, as we're going to see later, it's a very, very important problem to the uh, water bodies. Uh, specifically, in the textile industry process and the dyeing and the printing stage is the main stage that consume water and generate wastewater. In this stage, the most uh, chemical use are dyes, some additives as uh, surfactant salts, uh, electrolytes, uh, which are used to increase the dye fixation to the fabrics and improve the dye quality in terms of resistance of, to light and washing. So the textile was water content uh, are mainly dyes in concentrations to 50 to 250 milligrams per liter, metals, enzymes, starch, among other additives uh, that improves the pollutant uh, problem. All these compounds generate that the wastewater or the body of water, where this wastewater are thrown, have a high content of a chemical oxygen demand and ammonia nitrogen, cause irreparable damages on the environment. There are several methods to treat textile wastewater. However, exist some important restrictions such as pH value, the temperature, pollutants concentration, added to the presence of the additives the type of pH and the, uh, the type of additives, the type of dyes. So there are many, many restrictions um, to the textile uh, wastewater waste treatments. Uh, for example, in biodegradation, that is the most used method, have many, many restrictions. The presence uh, of the additives, specifically the salts, um, uh, cause cause uh, that this kind of uh, methods did no 
not um, high efficiency of the graduation of the of the dyes. Um, and there are other uh, uh, methods such as oxidation uh, process. Uh, the um, I'm sorry. There are other textile wastewater uh, methods such as ozonation that give us a high efficiency in the degradation and have no important restrictions. Um, so it's the one that we, as a you know, research team, uh, proposed uh, to this uh, research. The system uh, that we have proposed is uh, the reactive black file. Uh, and the use of additives are um, sodium sulfate and carbonate, sulf uh, carbonate sulfate. Uh, but I'm sorry, so uh, sodium sulfate and uh, sodium carbonate. If you can see, the concentration of the additives are in grams per liter. So uh, the concentration of these uh, salts are very high. And when they are in the wastewater, uh, the, they represent an important environmental problem. And uh, most of the research uh, to, to develop a new systems of treatment not consider this, these additives, or not consider the concentration of these additives. Uh, it, it's the main restriction that we have. These concentrations are used in the industry, or at least in Mexico. In Mexico, we they, the textile industry use these kind of concentrations. On the other hand, the the dye, the concentration of the dye is in milligrams per liter. So the difference is 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 huge. Uh, and if we focus all or our efforts to to um, the the composition or the degradation of the of the dye, but not focus or not consider the presence of the additives that change all all the system change all the uh, the oper operational conditions of the methodologies that we are proposed. So the focus of this research is consider these uh, additives and in a study if they are uh, benefits, they have some kind of um, improves or uh, are, um, are uh, or, or decrease our, the composition efficiency. All the ozonation experiments were carried out uh, at 55 uh, Celsius in semi-continuous glass reactor with an initial ozone concentration of 35 milligrams per liter, the ozone was obtained using an ozone generator with an oxygen flow of 0.5 liters per minute. The ozone and the oxygen mixture were distributed in the reactor using a porous ceramic diffuser located at the bottom of the reactor. The inlet and the outlet gas streaming were measured using a ozone analyzer connected to a personal computer, as we can see in the figure. Data acquisition software was designed to obtain the uh, ozone variation. Uh, this graphic that we have uh, in the computer, that we often in the computer, uh, as is known as an ozonogram. A uh, special software was developed in MATLAB to acquire the information from the ozone sensor and to save the ozone concentration measure during the ozonation. So this, this uh, this picture or this uh, figure shows the laboratory scheme that we used to carry out all the experiments. The methodology that we use, uh, we, uh, I'm talking about we because it was a, a research team. Um, a set of synthetic textile wastewater samples was prepared to simulate the flint composition of the textile industry. One set of dye solution with additives and the other set without additives. The, solution, uh, the solutions were ozonated until this coloration, and with the ozonogram, it will be identified at the end of the reaction. Once the first ozonation finished, the treated wastewater was um, added with a new dye in order to obtain the same volume uh, of a dye solution with a concentration of 250 milligrams per liter. No more additive was added. Then pH was pH was uh, measure, measured and adjusted to the initial pH. It means the dye solution uh, 
no, without automation. This new dye solution was subject to the next cycle of uh, ozonation. Um, here it's important to, to tell you that in a previous paper, uh, was determined determine the maximum number of recycles uh, to reactive plant five. Uh, this uh, recycles uh, was um, was determined by a by a AATCC test that we talk about them later. The number of uh, number of cycles to react in black five were eight. Uh, what we observe the pH for the reaction was very very important. As the ozonation uh, went on, pH value decreased due to the organic acid formation. As we can see in the system uh, with no additives, that the initial pH was 6, to the final pH was 3.5. And the system of the reactive black 5 with the additives of the sulfate additive with the pH initial was 7, and final pH was 6. This decrease due to the organic acid formation. This phenomenon was observed for two of these cases. However, to the systems that carbonate was involved uh, were conducted at uh, alkaline uh, pH, which indicate that there was a mixture of oxidants objects involved in the reaction. This effect was evident in the dye decomposition and discoloration time because of the reaction with chromophore groups. According to some researchers, the formation of ozone in, in secondary oxidants of base radical chain reaction type, in which reactants uh, as either oxyions acts a, a initiate initiate initiator, sorry. In such class of system, uh, hydroxy radicals acts as chain carriers. As we can see in all of these uh, reactions that were analyzed just in the system with carbonate because the, the, the effect of the pH. These characteristics increase the rate of ozonation of ozone decomposition. As a result of the reaction between those compounds, carbonate radicals were formed which are inert with the ozone. Those reactions decrease the concentration of radicals hydroxy. So, hence, the process efficiency decreases and the oxidation process is carried out by direct mechanism. However, there are reports explaining that the carbonate could act as a promoter in the presence of hydroperoxy, which rapidly reacts with ozone and accelerates the decomposition, gelling the formation of radical hydroxy. The systems with carbonate, carbonate may be used to explain how the ozone is consumed and then how the dye decomposition time is modified. Based on the information given with this parameter, um, which is basic in these two systems, uh, it means that the ozone reaction was carried out mainly through the indirect way. The reaction of radical carbonate with uh, hydroperoxide led to the formation of superoxy, which reacts faster with ozone and accelerates its uh, composition. This reaction broke in the formation of hydroxyl radicals. Therefore, carbonate and bicarbonate ions play a role of promoters of the ozone decomposition. And this ozone decomposition increases the decomposition, the dye decomposition efficiency. On the other hand, we have in the system with the sulfate. Sulfate ions reacts with the ozone to form peroxysulfate ions and sulfate radicals, which are more reactive compounds than the ozone. The following reactions that here in um, in the in, in your screen um, can can be carried out if the peroxysulfate ions is formed. Hence, it is feasible that these oxidants particip participate in the reaction. The presence of peroxysulfate ions increase the oxidation process efficiency, thus yielding the faster dye decomposition and producing benzene derivatives and organic acid with small molecular weight such as oxalic acid. Now, in this diapositive, uh, uh, we can see the ozonogram. This is the ozonogram for all the systems. As you can see, the ozonation time was very short, was four minutes. In four minutes, we have the total discoloration of, of the solution. 
we pass to the intense black to a yellow, brown, I'm sorry, brown, yellow, and uh, see-through. So, uh, for example, for the systems with carbonate, the, the composition uh, over the, this, uh, the coloration time was less than uh, one minute. The total decoloration that we observed was in four seconds. Compared with the reactive black five without additives, where the total uh, decoloration time was almost uh, three minutes, two or three minutes, and with the uh, system with the sulfate, it was the same, almost one minute. So we can see that the presence of these additives improves uh, the, uh, the discoloration process in the ozonization system. However, the uh, salt concentration was high, was in, in grams per liter. Um, so the, the, these um, ions form ions, uh, uh, the presence of these ions will improve the uh, coloration type. You can see that the systems with uh, with carbonate, the ozonation or the concentration of ozone uh, didn't return to the initial. The initial concentration of ozone was 35 milligrams per liter, but this, in these two systems, the, the final concentration was almost 20 milligrams per liter. This could be because all of these reactions, as the carbonate acts a, um, a scavenger, and the sulfate reacts with the ozone and the radicals formated. Uh, that will that will be the reason that this concentration then returns to the initial. Uh, these ozonograms are very important in the ozonation system because we can see the final um, reaction time when the concentration of uh, ozone in gas uh, gaseous phase. Um, remains constant. If you can see the first stage to zero, zero to almost zero, 0 0.5 minutes, we have an, a, a decrease of the ozonation. And then the, the concentration of, of ozone returns to the initial, as you can see in your system reactive black five and the system with the sulfate. Uh, when the concentration returns to the, to the initial value, we can say that, that the ozone, ozone reaction are finished and the ozone uh, didn't react with the final compounds that we have in the system. It means that the initial molecular of the dye was, it was decomposed to the oxalic acid mainly. These uh, ozonograms we treated mathematically and we obtained the consume of ozone in this second uh, graphic, we can see how the ozone uh, consume, uh, how the number of cycles uh, affect uh, the, the uh, consume of ozone. We can see that for the systems that a carbonate is, uh, is used as an additive, the consume of ozone was higher almost 4.3 4 times compare with the system with, uh, with the sulfate additive and the system that no have any, any additives. This higher consume of ozone uh, is due to all of these reactions. These reactions are the key for all the, uh, the results that we observed. And this uh, consume of ozone is very, very important. After we uh, ozonate uh, the, the dye solution, um, we make an imaging processing. What we do? This color imaging processing method was implemented in order to determine the stability of the dyeing process. It means that in each cycle, we add a new dye to obtain, to obtain uh, a new uh, colored solution. This colored solution was uh, used to dye in a piece of uh, cotton. And these fabrics, in these images, we can see uh, this, this cotton dyeing in each cycle. It means the A image is corresponding to the first cycle of reuse of water. Maybe at simple sight, we can see any, any, any significant variation of color. 
but we use an AATCC test a method using the textile industry. And, and we can see all the variations that we have. Uh, this set of images uh, specifically correspond to the case when the sodium sulfate was present in the ozonation reaction and no pH control was considered. So it is a case just for the sulfate, sulfate system. To make this imaging process, it's important to let you know that a photo shoot uh, was made for all of these images and the conditions of illumination was controlled. It means that it was the same camera, the, the same um, uh, source of light, uh, all, all was the same, the same distance uh, to, to develop a decent methodology. The image acquired was analyzed by means of total color units. The image is represented as E or uh, I, sorry, the I. Uh, this system, uh, with this system of this uh, mathematical analysis, analysis, we obtain an image processing. These uh, graphics uh, represent the color units. It means how the quality of the dye fixed in the on the cotton was uh, was um, different this uh, uh, graphic shows the color uni units decrease as the number of reusing cycles increase because the ph of the process remain acid through the conventional sonation process you, you can see that uh, uh, the pH is fundamental to uh, obtain all of these results. Under this condition, the main reaction that occurred between the dye and the cellulose was the hydrolysis reaction. Uh, here is the reaction of the, um, the dye of the interactions uh, that have the dye with the cellulose molecule in the cotton field. Fabric, sorry. <coughs> This provoked an interaction between the dye and the cellulose was weak, thus giving as a result the decrease of the dye fixation uh, to the cellulose substrate. This system, this is another graphic, it represents the color units to the system with sulfate, where the dye in quality dynamics was similar to the one that presented in the previous figure. However, under the fourth cycle, it was possible to claim that the color units remain constant with a 5% variation from the fresh solution. After this cycle, the decrement of color units was similar to the one shown in uh, the first figure. From Bob Dynamics, it was possible to observe the effect that the sulfate had on the dying fixative process. This additive acts as a stabilizer due to the reduction of the different zeta potential see the potential and the decrease of the dye solubility. This improved the affinity between the dye and the cotton as the following proposed reactions. The, the, the reaction between the sulfate and the cellulose. This reaction supports the dynamics from a few, the second figure because sulfate provoked that the color units have no significant variations which means that the water quality for the dyeing process could be better than the system without additives. Even though that in the um, presence of sulfate could improve the decoloration pro, uh, process on solution to decompose the dyeing in the wastewater, it could be affect uh, the quality of, the, of our final product if we want to reuse this wastewater into the dyeing process. Uh, the next image represents the color units to the systems with carbonate. This first one is the uh, reactive black pipe with carbonate. This figure shows the dynamics of the dyeing quality indicator for the system with carbonate used as a textile additive. additive. The byproducts from a neural ozonation process usually modify the pH value in the system. However, however if we remember, the pH of this system was uh, alkaline or basic. In the presence of carbonate, this parameter remains alkaline in conditions because carbonate was a strong alkali. 
This condition modified the reaction route because in the hydroxyl, hydroxyl group from the cellulose, cellular react with the sulfate group from the dye as the following reaction uh, we can see. These are the interactions between uh, now the carbonate and the sulfate with the cellulose. It is, it is worth mentioning that the color units uh, diminish around 23% between reactive black fight with the sulfate system and reactive black fight with the carbonate system at the beginning uh, of the reusing process. And this is the, the, other, the other dynamics um, where we can observe the same, uh, almost the same effect uh, when we have uh, the mixture of the salts. This can be explained because the carbonate increases the alkalinity of the system, which further the electrostatic repulsion between the dye and the fever because both compounds present a negative charge. For this reason, the color units in the fever, fever decrease. When the number of recirculations increase, the color units remain constant around the value of 155 for a reactive black fight with carbonate system which was the same value obtained in the four and next recirculation cycles for reactive black fight and the reactive black fight and sulfate system, respectively. Therefore, the mixture of additives was necessary in order to increase the color units in the fight. Despite the presence of sulfate in the system, the fresh sample has the same value in comparison with reactive black fight with carbonate which indicate the predominance of carbonate in the system. Once reactive black pipe was sonated in the presence of the mixture of additives, some bright, some bright byproducts uh, of the carbonate uh, were formed, which decreased the negative effect of dyeing on the fate. Additionally, alkaline pH of the medium remains constant, constant at, uh, after the ozonation process. The conductivity of the solution was appropriate for decreasing the zero potential. As a result, after the first recirculation cycle, there was no increment of 30, uh, 32 color units to the presence of sulfide, which favored the fixation of color on the fiber. Moreover, the profile of the color units remained constant as the number of recirculations increased. Therefore, an ozonation process was suitable alternative that allowed written textile waste were uh, reused in the dyeing process without affecting the quality of the color in the presence of additives. Um, the presence of sulfate uh, in the wastewater resonation process promotes the generation of peroxy sulfate ions under neutral conditions. It favored the ozone consumption and it was 10% higher than in the system without additives. However, the system with, with uh, sulfide presence was no stable system because the quality of color diminished, diminished 20 units when the number of uh, cycles increased because the neutral condition did not promote the fixation on cotton sample. In the system with carbonate, the ozone decomposition was promoted and the possible formation of radicals uh, hydroxyl accelerated dye decomposition rate that. 30 seconds. In addition, the ozone consumption increased 4.3 times uh, with carbonate in comparison with the system without additives to the formation of oxidant uh, species. However, in the system with carbonate decreased the color units in comparison to the system without additives to the electrostatic repulsion between the, uh, the dye and the fever. The repulsion can be explained to the negative charge. In the system with additive mixture, there was a competition between the carbonate and the promoter and the sulfate as a scavenger, which made the dye decomposition slower than it was in the carbonate system. However, um, under this experimental condition, after the first recirculation, the color units increased 32 color units to the presence of sulfate, which favored the fixation of color in the fever. And carbonate catalyzed the reaction between dye and the fever. The profile of the color units remains constant as the number of, of recirculation increased. The results shows an important effect of additives and pH control on the recycling strategy, which plays an important role in the quality of the fever in the dying process. That's all. Thank you very much. And sorry Thanks. for my bad English.
thank you very much, Dr. Elizabeth Martinez, for your insightful presentation on te textile wastewater treatment. To facilitate questions from your lecture, let us welcome Dr. Ria Sumagang, Assistant Professor at the University of the Philippines, Los Baños. She just finished her PhD Viva from the Department of Chemical Engineering, Gokongwe College of Engineering at De La Salle University. Let us again welcome Dr. Ria Sumaga. Hello, thank you, Dr. Arisbet, for that very interesting presentation. And actually, it's a topic that directly impacts everyone because I believe that we are all users of fast fashion here. So today we learned about uh, ozonation and uh, its high efficiency of degradation and that we should also focus on the additives when we are trying to um, to use ozonation in uh, in treating the dye uh, the wastewater with, uh, with dyes. So if you have if anyone has questions you may type them in in the chat box or you may raise your hand so we can call you and you may unmute to so you can ask your questions directly. Uh, maybe I'll ask the first questions while waiting for the others. So I'm interested about um, any costing studies. Have you performed um, if any preliminary costing uh, with regards to this process that uh, you are proposing? Um, this kind of studies, uh, I didn't make it because all the uh, experiments was carried at a laboratory level. Um, so in, in very, very controlled um, conditions. So if we want as a research team um, make an, um, uh, an economical study, it, we, have, uh, we must consider the, the real condition of the wastewater, the wastewater. Mm -hmm. The textile was where this is a, a, a model solution with no other additives present, but in real ways where we have a mixture of many, many additives. Mm -hmm. uh, we need more, more, uh, more experiments with other kind of additives and the mixture of. Uh, more additives. Uh, mm -hmm. We know that a wastewater from textile industry is uh, we we obtain this wastewater at high temperatures, more than 30, uh, 30 or thirty five uh, degrees, and it's important to see to to um, uh, recreate uh, the real conditions of the textile wastewater. Now right. it's a preliminary study. Yes. We, we can okay. make an Mm -hmm. a real economical story. Okay, thank you for your answer. So the next step is considering other uh, additives in experiments. Yes. Thank you so much. Yes. So I see somebody is raising her hand in the audience. Um, Susan Gallardo, so you may unmute yourself and ask your question. Yeah, good morning, uh, everyone. And thank you very much for the interesting lecture. Uh, you have shared with us, uh, Dr. Martinez. Now, uh, actually, uh, we had experience also using another advanced oxidation process in dealing with the uh, textile industries, specifically treating the dyeing, uh, the dye wastewater, uh, using uh, photocatalysis. Um, my question is. Uh, because you have not done this in the uh, actual wastewater, so I assume you use uh, you you simulated the wastewater you treated in the laboratory. Are you now considering uh, uh, pa partnering with a textile industry and use that technology uh, that you have uh, developed to the to the to the treatment of a dyeing in this, the dye textile at wastewater. At the same time, um, have you gone also assessing the current treatment of a uh, an industry 
and whether they have met the standard set by your by your environmental law uh, regarding uh, textile uh, wastewater. Okay. <clears throat> uh, now, uh, in the La Salle University here in Mexico City, uh, I'm developing a um, system, uh, uh, um, a little um, a treatment plant that we can use in, in, in water bodies or uh, we can use um, in, in the influence of uh, any kind of industry. Uh, this, um, this prototype that I am made um, was specifically developed to boil water. So I'm using the ozone technology, but almost I use the um, other uh, technologies or a mix of technologies. In, in this case, for this um, prototype is ozone with a photocatalytic reaction, with filters with photocatalytic reaction that uh, could um, make both reactions or both uh, parts of this uh, textile waste water. Treat the organic part that uh, it means the, the dye molecules that will be degraded by the ozone. And the other part of this prototype consider the absorption, absorption or the elimination of salts or metal, uh, metals uh, or any kind of inorganic compounds compounds so this uh, prototype consider these two parts in, in order to obtain uh, uh, wastewater with a quality uh, necessary to um, to use in another in another process or in the same process but it's a portal uh, prototype uh, we are considering now but the technology is not ready <laughs> in the laboratory, at the laboratory level. And uh, about the, the laws in Mexico City, uh, in general in Mexico, uh, um, for textile waste water, then in comparison with another countries in Europe, for example, is not considered consider the differences of the concentration of the 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 dye specifically the dye or, like, or the concentration of salts or the concentration of some kind of electrolytes or additives it is considered uh, yes the color in the wastewater but it's a general color that give any kind of polymer or any kind of contaminant or any kind of molecule but specifically dye no is not considered in it must be considered because most of our rivers or water bodies are contaminated with uh, this kind of, of molecules. Thank you, Dr. Arisbeth. Um, Thank you. May I also follow up that answer? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, also, uh, have you done um, a toxicity test on the effluent after ozonation? Are there no toxic uh, substances that could harm uh, marine life in case you, you discharge or the, the, the textile water uh, effluent uh, goes into a body of water? Uh, at this point of this research, we have make, uh, when I even make this kind of uh, test, but uh, we identify the main uh, uh, compound form from the decomposition of the reactive black pipe with the ozone, that was the oxalic acid. The, per um, a solution with a dye concentration of 50 milligrams per liter, we obtain uh, 100 milligrams per liter of oxalic acid. Uh, where the, the main uh, final product is uh, oxalic acid. Now with this system that uh, I'm talking to, that I'm, telling you that we are developed, we are considered of this biological and toxicity test uh, in order to um, uh, to prove or to show the efficiency of the system that uh, we are proposed uh, in, in the university. 
Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that question. Uh, I believe that uh, we are also concerned because in the Philippines, we have many bodies of water. So we are concerned with the, any toxic byproducts from the process. So I hope that we can uh, we'll have an update on your research once you are done with the toxicity studies. So we, we have another yes. question from Professor Katina Aviso. What are the potential barriers for industry to adopt this technology? So we are talking about what the scaling up and uh, adapting in, in the industry. Um, in Mexico, uh, specifically, um, <clears throat> the industry, um, all the chemical industry, uh, mostly uh, uh, was uh, wastewater plant uh, in, in the process. But typically, uh, they use in the biological treatment. Uh, why? Because it's cheap in comparison with the advanced process. And it's to the ozone uh, process is complicated that accept this technology because the cost that uh, that have to make to produce the ozone. So we need this part of uh, economical um, studies and to present a, uh, a real uh, proposal uh, showing the, the, benef the benefits that the uh, chemical industry could obtain of uh, the use of ozone to treat the waste. Mm -hmm. Yes, actually, that's one of our concerns in using ozonation because I believe it's energy intensive. Uh, but we are hoping that in the future, uh, with renewable energy, uh, this process will become cheaper and more available. Yes. So do we have any more questions from the audience? Please feel free to type in your questions. Uh, so we're, we have comments for the speaker. Thank you for an interesting and relevant presentation. This is from Professor Carmelita Febenko, one of our organizers. And uh, they are thanking Thanking you, Dr. Arisbet, for the interesting presentation. So maybe we can have uh, one last question. So aside from the, the things that you have mentioned about your future work, uh, what do you think would be the future direction of your research? What are you aiming in the, in, in the next years as uh, to be, to be um, part of the results of your research? Yeah, thank you very much for the invitation, and uh, I hope that the next years or the following years uh, we can I can show you the final uh, prototype that uh, we uh, are developing in the laboratory, and we can uh, show you all the results that we have uh, obtained. Um, mainly because it is a system that uh, I am develop uh, is focused on the um, uh, water bodies. Uh, contaminated with uh, transformation industry, not specifically textile industry, but in general. And it's important to us in, in specifically in Mexico City because we don't have any any more uh, water to drink. Drinking water is 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 over here in Mexico City. So uh, the government um, want to use the the water for from uh, natural body waters for uh, they i don't know if they if they don't know that this this water is contaminated mm -hmm. um, and the purpose uh, the the main focus of this uh, system that we are developing in, in la Salle, mexico is use use it to to mm -hmm. to clean water or to treat waste water or to to make a, a efficient system to pour, to to make uh, the water able to drink for everyone without causing any damage in the health. That's a very inspiring goal. <laughs> Thank you, Doctor Arisbet. Yeah. So we have a comment from the audience. Consider patenting your technology. So 
in the near future, you may want to consider that. So thank you so much, Dr. Elizabeth, for that, uh, for sharing your research. I mean, it's really um, relevant, especially to our country as well. Uh, since, as I mentioned, we have many bodies of water and we also have many industries that produce wastewater and dumping their waste into the bodies of water. So with that, we are ending the Q&A session. Dr. Ali, shall I proceed with share, with inviting everyone to the next um, sustainability lecture? Yes, definitely, uh, Dr. Ria Somagang. Okay, Thank so... you so much for facilitating the question and answer. Okay. So we would like to invite everyone to next month's sustainability lecture. The topic is on addressing dialogues about coffee and good living, the experience of coffee growing families in Costa Rica. So please um, use the QR code or the link to register in advance for our lecture. Our speaker is um, Olga Maria Duran Monge from the Universidad La Salle de Costa Rica. And also, we would like to hear from you. Um, if you have any feedbacks uh, with regards to our, how we conduct the lectures, please feel free to, to give any feedback so we can improve our sustainability lecture series. All right, Dr. Aris. Thank you so much, Dr. Ria. So again, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Aris Abet. Martinez for your presentation. Indeed, the the uh, the participants have a very warm welcome of your study. So again, thank you for sharing your expertise and time for uh, this today's lecture series. So again, thank you so much, everyone, for attending this lecture series, and we hope to see you see you again next month for another lecture series. All Thank right, you, so that's uh, that's all. Thank you. Bye for now. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye for now. Hope Bye. to see you next Bye. month. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone. I'll be ending the meeting.